Hello, and thank you so very much for joining me tonight. Thank you for stopping by my channel, The Luna Needs. My name is Jillian, and I'm so honored to be creating a video for you. I hope that you enjoy. I want to give a little intro to this session. It definitely requires one. This is inspired by a recent and very respectful and um, uh, kind but also interesting perspective comment that I got recently. Um, again, this was sent with love. It wasn't like a nasty comment or anything like that. Um, but it was a little of a criticism and that's okay. I can take that. But it was saying how in my older videos, I used to be able to, or I used to be more focused into the person and less so on, you know, like the sounds of the video or the ASMR style. So I wanted to address this, but also offer something because I think that that's a valid point. But I want to give a little bit from the perspective of a growing creator here on a very public platform that has a, a, a vulnerability to it, you know? Like there's a vulnerability that all creators face here. And when we're talking about like energy work and intentions and projections and soupy energy and stuff as in just like a mix of who knows what you know out there if i'm over here creating these sessions with an intention if someone chooses to utilize it this way as a um, by proxy energy work session as in i'm kind of putting this up into the cloud and if someone wants to download or receive what i'm putting out there then they can while it would be um, kind of ridiculous to say that that opportunity didn't go both ways, as in I need to be careful and protect myself from um, energy directed to me or intentions directed to me, or, you know, just because I'm human or I'm having a human experience here, <laughs> to, uh, you know, not not overwhelm myself as well and that's kind of why my channel evolution style has changed a bit it wasn't hyper intentional i think it was a natural progression to again protect myself and you know there's a lot of amazing wonderful people here but even the good can overwhelm someone you know what i mean like so uh i think i've done more of a straight delivery I'll put it in terms of my sessions like it has evolved to be more so that versus a sort of tuning in the tuning in i did more on patreon and the long forms or things like that where it was a smaller community and i've done that a little bit less so on youtube so i'm wearing black <laughs> In order to protect myself, you know, I've set some intentions with our candles here. We're creating a safe space and I do want an off to offer an intuitive session. So if you enjoy this, please let me know. I will contribute more of these into the catalog here for people to tune into. I'll create a playlist, you know, I'll, I'll work on it like a project, but, um, I just wanted to explain if anyone has noticed a difference in some sort of the format. I mean, surely the format will change. I get different microphones. I move. I'm I'm very. I'm working from a very limited space, and I have been pretty much since moving to Florida, short of like a few, um, like three six month period chunks where I was able to rent a space. I'm back in a very limited space you know i'm being constricted in a sense but i'm still showing up and one day i'll get my dream studio and all of these lovely things but i am working under restrictions at the moment so um point being or, or let me get back on track here um if you enjoy this please let me know because then i'll be able to, to i'll know and i'll be able to create more content that way for you and also just you know to remind everyone you know that Everything is a two-way street, you know, the good you wish people can come back to you and the, you know, um, I, don't want, I don't mean this as in people are wishing me bad, but everything is a two-way street, I guess. I'll just leave it at that. So be mindful of your 
projection as in what you're contributing and be sure to in, in install or uphold your boundaries when you need to and i think that most of us might have like a natural inclination of like how to hold our boundaries so i really hope that you honor them this is not me breaking my boundaries by the way but i'm taking this as a um opportunity again to create a little something different and also honor the true reiki practice that i'm experiencing in my like one-to-one sessions or even my video sessions of information there is an information exchange or um, opportunity to perceive information when we're in these subtle spaces when we're tuned into subtle energy when we're directing intentions and when a practitioner is scanning the body let's say or scanning the subtle body there are messages that come through this can be in the form of a sound, um, like a clear audience sort of sound, a word popping into someone's head, a visual, a feeling, a memory that is somehow connected like my own personal memory and it somehow relates to a shared experience of the receiver. There's lots of ways that the subtle senses will communicate to to anyone, but you know, speaking as a practitioner here, like to the practitioner. And in a session, those messages, or after a session, I guess you could say, sometimes during, but in a session, those messages are relayed to the receiver in and hopes, in a, in a take, take this with a grain of salt, this is just what I perceived, maybe this resonates with you, maybe it doesn't, but if it does, you know, I would encourage you to like think more on that again. All of this energy work, while I do believe it creates great shifts, while I do believe in chi and building energy and vital force and tuning into fields of of energy, of frequency and how that uh, serves and also just like influences people, you know, like how we can utilize that. I also believe that it can be simply if that's not the case and let's say someone doesn't really want that someone doesn't choose to participate with a session that way it's still a great opportunity to self-reflect does this resonate oh i'm picking up this this might resonate with you okay does that resonate and then you're self-reflecting yes it does and where is that taking me no it doesn't so let me move on to the next or let me think about how how that does not you know and it's a way of kind of sifting through subtle feelings or giving ourselves opportunity to experience or contemplate certain things that in some way, shape, or form seem to be um, a support in, I don't want to say unraveling, but the unfolding of your understanding of self, of your connection to you, of your sovereignty, and of your personal empowerment. So, that's what we're going to be doing here, an intuitive session where I'm allowing messages to come through. So in this session, it's possible that you get a message and I'm dedicating these as timeless. So it's not uh, specific to the day that I am making this or the season or the year or anything like that. It's when you connect with it you know when you connect with it you may receive a message in a timeless sense this brings me to the topic of expectation i think that it's a double-edged sword here in a sense as in on one side of the coin i really like to um, encourage people not to have specific expectations because they go sideways, you know, like we might want this, we want this to be revealed, we're working on this, but there's something in the sidelines, there's something in, you know, in the back, back the entry of our mind or consciousness that needs to be addressed first before this door can open or before this answer or this healing can take place. So while I think it's good to have an intention I think it's also important to relax a little of the expectations or allow for um, an, under an understanding that there could be things that present themselves prior to being able to address what the intention is because if this doesn't take place, then we're not going to be prepared for this. Like, again, more or less, just general way of putting that there. I hope that that makes sense. Still 
great shifts can happen. I've seen this hundreds of times in my client work with people and the teachings that I'm able to host, uh, like Reiki teachings and stuff. I have seen this make like truly transform people's lives or at least be a catalyst, a tool, a support for significant shift, transformation, evolution of the individual. Thank you so much for hearing me for this intro. If you enjoy my work, Patreon is a great way to support the channel. And as well as if you uh, resonate with me as a Reiki teacher, I have my teaches, my, my teachings, my classes now available on Patreon. I teach from the traditional form of Reiki, but also layered with my direct experiences, personal practices, and um, if I could put it this way, like my way of explaining how or uh, ways that we can activate things within ourselves, as in like, let's say our subtle senses reading, listening to our bodies, how we can interpret things and support ourselves through our personal work and energy work, but also supporting others if someone chooses to become a practitioner or even teacher themselves. So those classes are available below with some discount codes. Thanks for hearing me out. And we're going to set an intention here together. So on behalf of the highest and greatest good and perfect comfort and perfect alignment, my intention here today is to serve not only as um, an energy worker or even content creator for you to just relax and listen to this in the background if that's where you're taking it. I want to support you if it is through sleep, through meditation, through journaling, prompt, through any form of self-reflection that you might be doing at this time. And ultimately set an intention here as a conduit. A conduit, yes, for these messages whatever they may be. I don't know what's going to come up, but whatever they may be. And also for um, supporting the initiation or the um, start of energetic flow or movement to address anything that we perceive in the session. So while I did lay out a couple of tools, I might need to make some cuts so I can go get this or go get that because I don't know exactly what's going to come up, but I want to serve today as a messenger as a channel, and also as, you know, a quote-unquote healer, as someone to support you during or through, or at least in the beginning of right here, the processing of whatever we may discover today. Again, if it resonates and only in honor of and with honor holding your free will, your personal sovereignty, and, you know, ultimately just your overall well-being. I'm going to begin with just a simple auric cleanse. I think that connecting with um, my clients always begins beyond the conversation. We always have a conversation first, but I always start my sessions with an auric cleanse for me to be able to tune in, but also for... Um, to kind of clear any facade, any congestion, or anything that may be inhibiting that connection that we may have. I have this clearing mist, I'm just going to spray around you first. Right, I'm going to spray this over the top of your head. I 
idea right away it has a opalescent look to it like gyrosol quartz or even the man-made alchemical opalite opalite I'm gonna sweep down your eyes asking the messages to slow down I'm getting a lot of animal visions elephants and owls specifically and it's like in their eyes, like I'm seeing their eyes. I'm seeing a four pronged or four leafed herb or just floral of some kind. Not quite a four leaf clover, a little more curly looking on the edges. Like parsley or some sort of herb gently through and just sweeping through I'm seeing two crescent moons on the side of your face the sides of your face Focusing on the auric field here specifically. I'm seeing architecture, structures, tall structures, windows, gardens. some energy up from the earth to wash up and up and up the body to be received into your auric field and then down clearing out clearing the aura like water like waves down clearing and then up energizing energizing the auric field washing up And crashing down and through, pulling out from the aura anything that does not belong to you, anything that is not of your truth, anything that is disempowering, anything that is malicious or manipulative. Pulling down with the tide here and up, up, energizing, energizing, bubbles, foam. soul, that opalescent, um, even opalite sort of look through, it's soft, it's pastel, it's beautiful, not, ex not precisely transparent like water clear, there's a, a gel-like look within we're just commanding our aura to hold this quality, this healing quality, this fluid, oceanic quality as you breathe out and in and out and in. Your aura and 
glands release so we have a little fire and water here I could even say fire as I light this earth for the herbs within air for the smoke and the water spray Dragons. I know we're presently in the year of the dragon. your aura. And I'm just going to scan the aura one last time for any lingering, anything we can address. I'm seeing angelfish. And I'm seeing like, it almost looks Sorry, it's difficult sometimes to relay these messages or these images or whatever because it's like transcribing a dream. It doesn't necessarily make sense, but it almost looks like skiing uphill, <laughs> which sounds impossible, but I can see like a vague image of snow and this like image with the sun behind it with this skier looker looking image like moving up a hill I'm seeing birds flying together formation I see an eruption almost like a really hot oven or um steam smoke pipe or something like like smoke pouring out of something out of a structure not exactly a volcano something man-made like an oven or something similar just scanning the aura okay feels beautiful we're gonna focus in a little deeper now and do a body scan. So I'm gonna focus around your head. I'm almost seeing something like cast iron, like lead. Well, not that cast iron is lead, it's iron, but something heavy, like a cast iron pan. Perhaps you've been having some difficulty in connecting to the beyond, as in meditating or feeling connected, feeling connected to cause and effect as in feeling disconnected as in insignificant or meaningless as in your actions don't have meaning there's so much chaos in the world what does it matter what I do that type of thing I'm seeing an image of like hands Almost like you can't quite connect, like you're reaching up and hitting a wall. I'm just gonna stand down through around your head. I'm seeing this um like again architectural perspective of lines, like if you've ever taken an art class and you're learning how to draw a street with buildings and you get your ruler and you have your focal point and you're drawing the lines like to design the street or the buildings you can almost see just like the initial 
focal point and lines coming out is what it looks like. So I feel like you might be seeking to build your world, so to speak, but maybe struggling to imagine what that looks like or what you want or where you want to live for that matter, something like that. Where you want to put your work, where you want to grow and put your time. I'm seeing a peacock, so there, as I move down, it's... Peacock to me represents the peacock state in alchemy. It's like right before a breakthrough, there's this flash of colors. So there's some possible, like, right about the breakthrough or your words or your thoughts are supporting you in this transformation, in breaking through. Perhaps that is through affirmation. Perhaps that is through writing. But there's something about the voice and the words and the thoughts, but I feel very much the voice that is going to support this potential breakthrough and it feels like an imaginative breakthrough or breaking through a ceiling or realizing that you are connected. I'm gonna just keep scanning before we start to do the work. Moving down, scanning the collarbones, shoulders, down the arms or upper meridians, just scanning. I see almost like a a genie lamp, like Aladdin, like something you want to rub and make a wish in the right hand. So your dominant channels. Perhaps you're feeling like you need something, a miracle, something to uh, shake things up, something to mm, maybe even do the work for you, like a shortcut or something. I say this with love and respect. Scanning. I see an apron, <laughs> crafting. I just want to move back. Up the shoulders, down. Focusing on the receptive palm. I feel a block here. Almost like the arrow is pointing out when it should be pointing in. Like you're giving so much of yourself right now, but is it worth it? Are you spinning your wheels? Just getting up. I see an image of um, the image for Uranus, like the image for change. It's kind of shifting. It's like Pluto, Uranus, Pluto, Uranus. So this time of rebirth, this time of change, this time of shaking things up and tuning into your power and it seems like you're you're almost pushing it away or you're directing that away from yourself in some capacity. Moving up the arm or the meridian here. Focusing into the heart and chest. I see ribs, I see the heart, let's call on the lungs, remember to breathe, and let's shift focus from the physical heart, we want to focus into the energetic heart space, the higher heart, the soul heart, I'm seeing a rabbit, a quickness, a softness, a vulnerable, a wide-eyed as in um, perceptive, as in sensitive there's something here of, I don't want to say prey, like bird of prey, but like there's a fight or flight sort of feeling here like you want to just chill and enjoy the grass, <laughs> the sun, but you feel like you have to be on guard, really rough, like a really harsh feeling of being on guard, on edge, stressful. 
And I'm not, forgive me, I'm not relating that to your higher heart. I'm just doing, trying to pick up what could be blocking or just what comes up. Moving down to the solar plexus, I'm getting an image of a serpent or a lizard eye. Tuning in. Unravel that a little more. What is that? I feel like you're potentially operating out of fear, as in your actions feel more aligned with, um, let's say, scarcity, or let's say, uh, survival. Let's say, um, yeah, like things like that. Primal, like your primal, your safety your security. Okay, tuning through. I'm seeing insects. Um, praying mantis. So there's this sort of otherworldly quality here as well in the solar plexus. This fierceness to you, this warrior, this um, Powerful. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm struggling there to. It's kind of escaping, and the next things are picking up. Scanning down the trunk of the body. Doing some gentle sweeping, clearing through the organs, just like this. Just gently through the organs, specifically the intestine. I feel like um, perhaps some slowness in the turns of the intestine. Please don't interpret this specifically as a, this is not medical advice ever, right? Like I'm just being real with what feels like it's coming up. So I'm just sweeping through a little. Think of it more metaphysically, digestion, some blockages in the digestion, some harder to digest feelings or ideas or changes for that matter. Right, scanning down to the sacral. I see three points, like three orbs. Three is this energy of creation. Tuning in, seeing a ginkgo, ginkgo leaf. Flowers, there's this um, creative force really building here. Scanning down to the root area, around the hips. It's almost like, see, like a pogo stick stopper, like trying to launch off of something or connect or break through, but it's like hitting a stopper. Just scanning, gonna scan down the lower limbs. I'm seeing a keyhole here as I scan down the legs, the lower meridians. On the right side, I see a structure. It looks similar to a ladder or honeycomb or even piano keys. But this like matrix from the ankle up to the knee. Again with the right side, it looks sort of hollow. Um, as in, again, like a matrix, but I can see through it. Scan the left side. It feels almost vaporous, um, cloud-like. Trying to tune in to see what this 
ladder, matrix, honeycomb, waffle, compartmental, structural. I feel like you've had to create your own support. I feel like this is kind of tied to your alchemical instinct that I had from the beginning of the time here together. As if um, the support, as if the ability to navigate and also the support that you receive specifically tied to the past or to um, masculine energy so a simple way of putting that would be you know like in relation to how you felt supported by your father or how you're navigating the um, more masculine aspects of the life experience and that's you know male or female it's just to clarify it or give a little more context. I'm just sorry, I'm just scanning here, trying to let it come to me. I think you're creating your own support. I think you're creating your own connection to um, feeling supported, particularly to the past or in relation to the past or what has occurred already and particularly potentially in relation to like um, father figure or um, uh, more masculine energy so this could be your actions you know this could play be how you are ex uh, in engaging with or presenting yourself or showing up in those roles in your life, you know, and again, it's not, you could be a woman and you, we still have our masculine qualities, right? The expressive, the action, the logic, the planning. So it feels like this area that was um, insufficient for you for some reason or needed to be reworked, needed its own... Um, architectural restructuring in a sense on how you connect that way and you're doing that and it's necessary because you need that stability you need that um, assurance of support from the environment so you're somehow creating that on your own or you know like in your own way or you're alchemizing something here and I want to tune into this vapor on the the right, excuse me, the left here. My right ear left. <laughs> hmm. Just asking for a little more clarity. I think this is also under construction in some sense. A different approach, not so, you know, perfectly measured, not so, um, there's a contrast here compared to what I just described. I think you are, somehow there's a vapor quality, a amorphic quality. It's soft, it looks like a pale, soft blue, like a sort of chalcedony look to me. And this is more so related now to the future and to, let's say, your, the feminine. So this could be a mother figure. But it can also be, um, you know, your relation to the environment and your feminine aspects now. And it also feels, again, because of the amorphic nature, sort of um, under construction or in development of some kind. So it seems like you're connected, but like reworking how you connect and how you feel supported. You're alchemizing how you feel supported in the environment and then, of course, how you navigate from that point. Again, future and past, feminine and masculine, intuitive and analytical, free-flowing and um, planned, orchestrated. Moving up through, 
we have this energetic um, creativity here that is budding, that is knocking around, that is not feeling very forceful, it doesn't feel very hot, it doesn't feel overwhelming, but there is certainly like something blooming in your creative field, a garden, a, um, and that's metaphorical, a, a garden, um, three orbs moving up, um, you're operating a little bit right now out of like scarcity mindset or, um, some people call it like monkey brain or lizard brain, like, like a fear programming a little. And that's okay. That could be just for today. It could be for a moment you're having, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying this is how you are. This is just what I'm picking up on, what you might be experiencing. This is not you in some sort of, um, like quality of you. It's more of an experience you may be having. Moving up again, I think that there's some sort of, again, fear of some kind that's very general, some fear of some kind inhibiting you from fully enjoying yourself and surrendering and being playful and quick and creative. I don't know what that is exactly, but it's something like, you know, you feel like people are watching you or you feel like, um something wants what you have, or you feel like you have to protect something in some way. And then again, this um, peacock, this uh, really alchemical force that you have, it's very mental. That might be what's tied to, to that um, support that I was saying, the structure I feel like you're creating. It's very thought, it's very word, it's very written. And then we have a genie lamp, <laughs> a perhaps a, a wish of some kind to receive a miracle or for things to really shake up. Or maybe that is truly what you are receiving and it isn't a wish. And on your dominant side, there's an energy of sending out versus receiving. Something tied to rebirth, something tied to power, like really powerful energy and change and going against the grain going out of the box being your unique so it feels like you might be pushing something like that away in your vision in your third eye we feel a very beginning like a understanding of the focal point and understanding of how the world shapes to you and your focal point but it's not quite designed yet it's not quite um, it's not quite visible, so it might be having a harder time imagining what that is or what the world is that you want to live in, how you want your life to live, excuse me, how you want to live your life, how you want your lifestyle to be. There seems to be a, a, a skeleton, but not, not details yet. And I feel something, uh, heavy, <laughs> like again, cast iron on the crown, so perhaps there's a issue here of like connecting beyond like feeling connected to it all so we're gonna do a little work to work through this i hope that you enjoy right i'm actually for the crown I'm gonna be using this cubic fluorite and a lapetalite mica lapetalite and i'm just gonna rub this on the crown with the intention of comfortably initiating the softening of that crown block so that when you're ready you can just breathe on it you can just look at it and it will crumble okay might be right now might be when you wake up so we're just just like this i hope the sound isn't terrible the pedal light for comfort for peace Purple for a crown activation and fluoride for um, confidence in this, paste, methodical in a sense, and the structural nature of what I'm just picking up on in this session. I'm going to rub the cubic fluoride on the ground. And, 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 and,
just who I am anymore. You are connected to everything. Your actions, your choices affect us all. I don't say that to put pressure on you, but I just mean more so that you matter. Your choices matter. Your efforts matter. Your manifestations matter. there's anything that needs to necessarily be done for the third eye area or the correspondence there, but I am going to use this peacock pheasant feather and just channel through supporting flow to the imagination, allowing the details to unfold, to develop, to materialize in your plan, in your master plan, in your um, imagination of what you want, the structure of this world, this street. And I'm channeling through whatever you need, whatever would be best for you to support your development here in perfect comfort and perfect timing. Empower the throat, the thought, the words, the language, the frequencies. Because this is a very much a key to your breakthrough here. There's a flash of color. There's a tie here to the shift that happens through just like an aha. Uh -huh or a word you say, or how you declare yourself. So keep using your affirmations, keep writing things down. And yell into the ocean, declare it, claim it. Moving down to the bunny. Focusing here to just visualize a pyramid, a bubble of white light all around you. Knowing you are protected, you are safe. Listen to your instincts. They are there for a reason. But let's take away any unnecessary fear. Use our little shears here. And we're just going to clear and cut the grass, maybe. So Bunny can see. Take away the mystery. And then let the bunny know that yes, your instinct is good. We want that instinct. But if it's just the wind and the grass, let's just cut the grass so we can see more. So we're bringing awareness to our fear. What is this fear? Where does it come from? Why is it here? Is it serving me? If it is, what is the message and how do I respond? And if it isn't, how can I address this and let it go so I can continue? Heart and 
higher heart. And again, this light, this energy pouring down into your ground, grounding here into the body. Alright, now focus on the solar plexus, operating on a little robotic, a little lizard-minded, they say sometimes. Let's just call in light. Let's just call in confidence. Let's call in truth to who you are. And you are not a lizard brain. <laughs> and you are not fearful at your core. This is a manipulation. Clear. Cleanse the lens from which you receive your energetic force and cleanse this lens from how you project your energetic force. you have that is rising, this garden, these flowers blooming, these uh, sacred three <laughs> orbs. Moving, moving, moving. See the rain supporting your creative, your creativity here. And we want to cleanse cleanse through any congestion in this creative energy. We also want to release from the space. Um, release might not be the best word. Support the release of this um, what aren't we digesting? What is hard for us to process? And just create a little bit of um, reference for that as in um, compassion for yourself and let this come to light let this be recognized in your consciousness so that this can process let your perspective be transformed from mind to gut let's say support the movement here and that will support your creativity and how you process all kinds of stuff <laughs> moving down to the roots feeling a little disconnected from the earth again let's break through here right here you have a C note singing bowl we're gonna use this to allow the resonance to move through us to help us connect with the earth field Feel that blockage in the root melting away and you richly connect with the earth. However, I do want to put a opportunity or an invitation to again recognize divine timing. Perhaps you have pulled away from the earth in a sense, again figuratively speaking, because there's something in your field that is under construction something you're working on. So maybe you're a little bit of a hermit right now. Maybe you've closed yourself off because you're going through a change and that um, retreat is beneficial and necessary in some aspects. But remember, you hold the key. You hold the key to this field. You hold the key to your um, participation here, to your um, presence, to your connection. So it's okay to pull back as you are 
amorphic and developing structure for yourself. But remember too, you can connect at any time and we welcome you back when you feel called, right? That might be right now, that might be a week from now. This is all in alignment with you and your timeline, not mine, okay? But let's honor your connection to the earth and you're never disconnected from it fully, just like you're never disconnected from your spirituality. But I hope you can understand what I'm trying to say here in this concept of self, um, self, uh, quarantining almost in a sense. That's not it. It's not an illness. Forgive me for putting it that way, but this self-imposed pull back. Let the energy of the universe support you in this. Let intelligence support you. And let the earth support you. Let it nourish you. Let it be resourceful to you. So I hope you can see a paradox though, but you can disconnect without ever being disconnected. You can pull within yourself to do this work that you're doing, but you are never disconnected, okay? One more. you enjoyed this intuitive session. I hope that this supports you. And we're just fluffing up the aura, commanding the aura to maintain that abalone shell, that gear soul, that opalite look, that opalescence. I want to remind you, please drink plenty of water, get plenty of rest, be gentle with yourself following an energy work session. Take some time, reflect, connect with nature, take a bath, do something for you, okay? You will see the effects of this over the next three days um, most, uh, most noticeably, as in um, there could be like a whoo, but this is continuing to work for three weeks, 21 days. So it's still processing for 21 days is what I mean by that. All right, I send you so much love, so much gratitude, so much thanks, and I hope, really hope that you enjoy. From the very bottom of my heart, I bow to the divine in you and I and to this beautiful connection that we share. So very much love to you. <laughs>